So hello everybody and welcome to another Dax Fridays. In today's Dax Fridays we are going to talk about events in progress, which is basically time intelligence, like when you want to capture open orders, close orders, you know, periods in time. And uh, I actually read a blog post by Gerard a million years ago and it just made everything so much clearer to me and I want to go through it and explain everything in detail because it will help you do time intelligence like a king, <laughs> okay? So let's get started. Okay guys, so I have a table that has some orders. You see here, order date, shipping date and order number. You can see them here too and there. So I just to be able to see, visually see what's going on, I just pick those orders because it represents all the different cases that we will have. I'll show you later. But um, obviously you can have a bigger tables. And what we want to capture is the open order. So you can see that order one it goes across uh, July, June, July, August, uh, order two like that. So this is a representation of how those orders in a Gantt chart. I'll show you how to do that in another video, don't worry. And um, what we want to do is we want to be able to pick a month. For example, we're going to shoot for July, 20th of July, and we want to see how many open orders we have on that specific month. So it should be 01, 02, 03, and 05. Those are the ones that are still open, right? So how do we do that? Well, the methodology he has on his blog, an image that for me clarified so many things about DAX back in the day. It was wonderful. And we're going to go through that picture in detail because it is so clever. You might start wanting doing a lot of if statements and going mad while his approach is so beautiful. So let's go and explain that and then come back here and do the actual DAX. Okay guys, so this is how I always think after reading this blog post a million years ago about time intelligence and it is so, so helpful. Let's go through our case, but let's draw it out. Let's map it out to see what we actually need to do in order to capture those open orders. So our data, we have orders in our case split in three months, like that. So this is June, this is July, and this is August. Okay? Now, let's go through the orders and see what we need to, you know, how our orders look like. So we have the first order, or the one that goes from June all the way to August. This is order one. We have order two that goes from July, June to July. So June to July, order two. Order three goes from July to August. July to August. Order four, it goes from August to August. Order five, it goes July, July. And then Order six is goes in June. So this is basically all the cases that we have, that we can have for orders. Beautiful. Now, you're going to start doing tons of view conditions to try to capture every single one of them. But look at this. This is the beauty of his methodology of actually representing it visually so you can see. So the orders that we want to grab are obviously 01, 02, 03 and 05. Those are the ones that are open. So the thing that they have in common, if we look at the order date, this is our orders, order dates for the orders that we want to capture. And let's say that we are going to period pick the period of July. You can change this period later, but let's do July just as an example. So we have from the 1st of July to the 31st of July, right? So this is our min date in our slicer, and this is our max date. Okay? So, what does those green dots have in common? If I look a green line, if I draw a green line in there, all the dots, all the green dots that are the order dates are less than our max date. 
So if order date is less than our max date, then it's an open order. Okay, now let's look at our shipping date. If we look at here, shipping date, shipping date for the orders that we want, that we know are open orders, the orders that we want to capture. And then we look at the deadline, we see that all the shipping dates are bigger than our mean date. You can see them here. So if our shipping dates are bigger than our mean date, then we are still capturing our open orders. This is equal and this is equal. Obviously, we want to capture also on the date. Maybe you decide. And you say, okay, so what happens with, with 04 and 06 that should not be included? Look at this. Order date, if we go back to the green, order date has to be less than max date. Order date is not less than max date. So this is going to be excluded. 04 is not going to be included. And if we go to our shipping date, shipping date is here, has to be bigger than the mean date, and it's not, so this is going to be excluded by default. So only our open orders are going to get grabbed by this simple condition. How cool is that? So now we need to go and translate these into DAX. So it's not as easy as it looks. Let's jump into DAX and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so now that we know that, you know, the faltering condition that we need to set on our table in order to be able to grab our open dates, we need to translate that into DAX. So let's do that. We go to new measure, I'm going to call it order, open orders. And we're going to create a variable for the max date. We're going to figure out what our max date is. And this max date will capture the max date on the calendar, on the folder that we're going to set. So it is the max on, I'll show you, don't worry, calendar, we're going to put return. One of the wonderful things about variables is that you can actually troubleshoot so easy max date. Let me show you what it returns. So I'm going to put open orders in here, put it down there, and then if I pick July, 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 where are you my dear? July 2020, you are going to see that the max date is the end of July, which is what we had discovered before, and if I go in here and I do one more variable, which is going to be mean date, and we're going to see what the return what, what it returns basically mean not me mean date. Enter. So you see, it returns the 1st of July. So if I would pick, for example, another period in 2019, it will return the first and the last. So now we have a date. So two variables that capture the period that we want to know how many open orders we have. Beautiful. It's a good progress, isn't it? It's baby steps. Create your tax measures step by step. Otherwise, you're going to go nuts. Seriously. <laughs> okay, so now... The next thing that we want to do is to actually count how many orders we have in that specific time interval. So we are going to count, calculate. Should I do, should I do, should I do? Let me do it by step by step. Count rows. We are going to count the order table, but it's not the order table as is. We want to have the order table falter the way we specified before. So we're going to falter our order table, uh, order table, filter order table. And we want to filter where the order date, what do we say, was smaller than or equal than the max date. We have now a variable for that, so we're going to grab that. And the order 
ship date was bigger or equal bigger or equal where are you my dear mean date okay and you may think like oh i got it i got it not really we haven't got it yet but let me show you i think it's better to show let's grab our desired so now when i pick july july 2020 look what happens to my table it is obviously you must like what's the issue is filtering right so because we have a relationship between orders between data or the date when i pick a date here it will filter my table that's the way these filter this right so normal tax so it is filtering already by my two uh, order dates so when i put my open orders in there what happened my dears well because it's already filtering my table this is filtering my table in here we won't see all the open orders. We're going to see only the open orders where, you know, the open order is July. And we don't want to do that. We need to block the relationship. We need to block that filter that you see in there. And the way to block this is, let me show you. It's actually quite cool. So you go here, calculate, and then you do cross filter. And cross filter allows you to set a relationship one way, the other, none, both, right? So cross filter, first you need to have the um, single one, I think, calendar date. Then you need to have the order date. So this is the relationship on one side, the relationship on the many side, which is the order date. And then you have, we're going to set it to none. We said don't let it filter so ignore that there is a filter that there is a relationship so don't allow the table to filter and once we do that look at this so now we have 01 02 03 05 and then if we go here to uh, june you can see that june should be 301 0206 and these are the ones that we see if we pick August we will see 01, 03, 04. How cool is this? So there are a million and one ways to write these DAX measure to do exactly the same thing. I just thought that this one was the one that explained it best for my head that I could actually see what's going on. I can see that it's calculated on the filter table and then it's disabling the relationship so no filters get crossed, and then you calculate the max and the mean. But if you look at Gerard's post, you will see that at the bottom he has the Power BI file that he uses, and he has a ton, a ton, seriously, of other calculations that you can use to do the exact same thing. Download it and play with it. It's so cool. I'm going to post again the link down below to his blog post because what he does, he is filtering that or blocking the filters in other ways that are super cool and if you go online you'll find another thousand a million ways that you can do that again there are a lot of ways to do something in dax pick the one that suits best your data and your model okay there's no one answer in here so on the next video i'm going to show you how i did this how about that i think it's actually quite cool um so we're going to allocate the orders and the uh, basically create this Gantt chart so we can see. And you can use this for projects, you can do this for all kinds of stuff. So if you want to learn more about CrossFilter, I have a video here about how CrossFilter works in detail, so go and check that out. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video on Tuesday. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and until then, take care, and bye-bye.